Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. On Election Day, we have a special guest on the line, Stacey Abrams. Good morning, Stacey. Good morning. Thank you guys for having me. Man, I got so many questions for you this morning. Number, <laughs> number one, when did Georgia become a battleground state? When we, did I miss that? <laughs> we, were, we were possibly a battleground state in 2016, but we know in 2018 when we were able to finally invest in black and brown voters, in discouraged voters, in low propensity voters, we became a battleground state. It was a 1.4% race. And so this year was the first year we had a presidential nominee who was willing to put the money in. And it didn't hurt that we have two U.S. Senate races. John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock, who spent a lot of money to make sure that voters understand what's at stake and that their voice matters. So we have you to thank for Georgia becoming a battleground state then. I, I've been doing a lot of work, but I can't take all the credit. We've had a lot of folks who've been trying to make this happen. Now, Stacy, as the expert, I got some questions for you of what's happening today. So let's just say you're not registered to vote. And so you think that you can't vote. Is there a way that you can register to vote today? So it depends on the state you live in. If you go to IWillVote.com, it will give you information about whether you're in a state where they will allow same day registration. We know, for example, in North Carolina, you can register the same day. I think the same thing is true in Michigan. So go to IWillVote.com, put in your zip code, put in your information, and it will tell you how you can register to vote if you can. Georgia, unfortunately, does not allow same day registration, but there are a lot of states that are moving in that direction. So make sure you take advantage of it. Now, today is the last day. Now, how important is voting for black and brown voters? There's a lot of people out there say, ah, my vote doesn't matter. It's just one vote. Or I'm in a state that always goes Democratic. I'm in a state that always goes Republican. So what do you say to those people out there? I live in Georgia. You can't count anybody out. So here are three things to know. Number one, voting isn't magic. It's medicine. And so if we want to cure the ills, if we want to cure the diseases that we see in our country, racism, systemic inequality, police brutality, income inequality, healthcare, all of those things get changed by voting. In Georgia in 2018, we had a congressional person, a congressional candidate who lost by 433 votes. Mm. So close races change the future. And we know if we can take the Senate and hold the House and win the presidency, that's the game changer. That is something we haven't seen since 2008. So number one, Think about voting not as magic. You're not gonna get everything you want by voting, but you get more of what you need. And the more we do it, the healthier we get. Number two, your vote counts because if it didn't matter so much, they would not be spending millions of dollars to stop you. And they know they can count just like we can. And for the first time in American history, we've reached an inflection point where there are more of us than there are of them. And when I say more of us, I mean more black and brown folks who can actually change the outcome of elections. That hasn't always been true. For most of my life, we have been nice to have, but not necessary to have. Now we're necessary. And if we show up and use our power, we win. Number three, if this is a close race, which we expect, it's going to be those marginal votes that nobody expected that actually changed the world. So your vote could be the one that tips the difference one way or the other. And whether you vote or not, you're, you're making a choice. If you don't show up, they're going to decide, they're going to assume that you chose what we've got. And if you're good with that, Okay, but if you want something different, if you want something better, if you want a president who actually thinks that we shouldn't die from COVID-19 so that he can you know, pretend, if you want to make certain that we have a plan to stop chokeholds from killing black folks and brown folks, if you want there to be a difference, you not only need to vote for the president, but you need to vote all the way down the ballot. I heard the Earth Gang, I was on an IG Live, and the Earth Gang said, the closer you get to the bottom of the ballot, the closer you get to home. So don't just think that the world is solved with the presidency. We got to vote for DAs, judges, mayors, state legislators. So make sure you vote the entire ballot. That's like doing a scratch off ticket and only scratching off a couple of numbers. Scratch off the whole thing so you can make sure you <laughs> win the political lottery. Now, Stacey, what if you show up and they say you're not registered? So again, go to IWillVote.com to make sure that you're in a state where you can do same day registration. But if you think you're registered, go anyway. And what can happen is if you have any problems, call 866-HOUR-VOTE, 866-HOUR-VOTE. The only two things you need to remember today besides going to vote, IWillVote.com and 866-HOUR-VOTE. Our vote is populated by civil rights attorneys whose only job today is to help you vote. So they can help you understand if it's your issue or if it's their issue. 
And one of the ways voter suppression works is by taking people off the rolls who should not have been removed. If you call 866 hour vote, they can help you get your registration issues resolved if possible, and they can tell you what you need to do. But no matter what happens, do not get out of line. Thank gotcha. you. Do you think Fair Fight um, has done its job? Do you, you know, what role do you think Fair Fight played in ensuring that the voting process is fair all across the country today? So when I launched Fair Fight in 2018, my first mission was to lift up the issue of voter suppression, to talk about it out loud, because we've known about it for years, but no one really was willing to say it out loud because we were afraid it would scare people. What I want people to understand is whether we said it or not, it was going to affect us, so we might as well talk about it. So number one, I think we have had a robust conversation over the last two years about voter suppression. Number two, in the state of Georgia, we were able to change some of the worst laws related to voter suppression, making sure that exact match no longer holds black and brown voters hostage, but also making sure that if you make a mistake on your absentee ballot, you now have time to fix it. They have to tell you there was a mistake and they've got to let you fix it. But across the country, starting in August of 2019, we have been in 20 battleground states. <clears throat> we were there to help make sure that voters got restored to the rolls and Andy Bashir became the governor of Kentucky when the Republican governor tried to purge 145,000. We were down in Louisiana when John Bell Edwards needed black voters who were facing voter suppression. We were able to make sure they could make it through those lines and get to vote and he was restored. We were in Wisconsin in April, making sure that voters got the right to vote even in the midst of COVID. And we have been working across the country, helping shore up through litigation, legislation, and advocacy. And the one number I'll use is this. In January of 2020, only 34 states allowed you to vote by mail with no excuse. As of today, it's 45 states. That means that in 45 states out of 50, people have the right and have had the right to vote absentee. That is huge because in the midst of a pandemic, it was the safest way to vote. And I wanna remind everyone, if you have an absentee ballot, take it directly to your elections office, to your drop box, get it in, do not hand it to the post office. Today's last call, drop it in yourself and make sure that you get your ballot turned in. Do you think we will know a winner for tonight? Or because some people say we might possibly know, what are your thoughts on that? So what, we use, what we're used to are predictions. We don't ever mm -hmm. know the actual answer on election night because states take time to count. We will likely have predictions, but hopefully the predictions will be based on the best information. And my hope is that we won't hear anything until people know something. It is better for us to get an answer that is slow and right than fast and wrong. And if we take the time to count all of these absentee ballots, more than 100 million people voted early, and it takes more time to count paper ballots, we need to be patient. We don't need to know the answer when we go to bed. What we need to know when we go to bed tonight is that every American who wanted to vote got a chance to vote. We'll get the answer, but I'd rather have the answer be right than have an answer that's unclear and that leads to chaos. Stacey, gotcha. do you think the, the, the Democratic model as currently constructed is sustainable, meaning Black men and Black women are the largest group of voters for Democrats, but it's always show up for them, but a lot of Black people feel like they don't show up for us. How much longer can that work for, for Democrats if it works today? Well, I, I frame it slightly differently. Yes, Black voters have been the most loyal contingency of the Democratic Party, and we are being joined by more and more young people, by more and more people of color, Latino, Asian American, Pacific Islander, Native American. We're being joined by white voters who realize that the Republican model does not help them progress. But we also have to remember our numbers are different. For so long, we voted in a party where we were not only the minority in the population, we're the minority in the party. But when you add together all of the rising American electorate, we now have the ability to actually set the agenda if we show up. And that's the big piece I think it's missing in this conversation. 20 years ago, there weren't enough of us to absolutely guarantee outcomes. Now there are. If we actually voted our power, we have the ability to not only change the direction of the Democratic Party, we can change the direction of the nation. But we've got to recognize that it's a dual responsibility. We need those, we need folks to pour into us, but we've got to pour into ourselves and make sure that we vote our power up and down the ballot. Because it's not just about who wins the presidency. It's about who wins every single seat and makes every single law. So Plus, after we do that, how do we make clear, I guess, I guess, what do we do next? Like, do we make clear demands and to tell them what we want? Absolutely. So I, okay. I talk about it this way. We protest in the streets to demand what we want. We protest at the ballot box to get who we need. And then we protest in the halls of power to hold them accountable. Politics mm. is the only job where you get hired and then people leave for two to four years and expect you to just do what you're supposed to do. 
If we don't hold people accountable, why would we think they're going to do what we need them to do? Yes. Well, Stacey, thank you so much for joining us. I know it's a super busy day. You have all these live TV hits, but we do always appreciate you for checking in and keeping us informed. Oh, we've done already? She has a live hit in five minutes. She Can I ask, oh, let me get one. I got one more then, uh, okay. Stacey. You were a VP hopeful. People said Stacey was campaigning for the job. Was that ever the case? And if so, how do you feel today? I never campaigned for the job. I answered questions. And apparently mm -hmm. being honest is not supposed to happen. I don't believe in denying my ambition because I'm not just mm -hmm. speaking for myself. I'm speaking for every black and brown girl who's ever wanted more. And people, I can't assume people will give me the benefit of the doubt. I've got to give myself the platform. And if you ask me a question, I'm going to give you an answer. And I've, I've always tried to be candid and I was candid then. Let's remember, I got the same question starting in March of 2019. The only person who was asked that question over and over again for 18 months. And my answer never changed. It's just people started paying attention. All right. Well, Stacey, we appreciate you for checking in. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. 866-hour vote. Get it done. All right, All right. Stacey. Peace.